I love Adobe Character Animator for how much it lets me get done very quickly in terms of puppeteering my characters, but uh, it still takes quite a bit of time to rig up a character properly. It is a lot quicker than a lot of uh, other 2D animation systems, but it's still not the fastest thing in the world, mostly because uh, you always still have to run through the process of putting your bones down, that sort of thing. So I've come up with a way of being able to build a wide cast of characters uh, based on one body type. So I'll create one character file, I'll rig that up, but then I'll have controls that'll let me change it to dozens or possibly hundreds of characters. And I want to share that with you. Uh, it's all using the layer picker function, which is really, uh, it's probably not designed for this. And there are times where it takes a little bit of time to actually load up the uh, puppet files that I do make out of this, but it's very handy. Uh, I mean, if you think about a show like The Simpsons, they have hundreds of characters, and uh, if, if Homer goes to the store, he's going to run into Apu, or if he goes uh, or gets in trouble with the law, Chief Wiggins there, and they just have those characters because they have all these animators working on it, but if you're running solo or a very small team working on a project, you don't probably have time to make hundreds of characters. If you walk with confidence, no harm will come to you. Just keep your chin up and we'll be fine. I don't think chin level matters to criminals. No, it sure doesn't. So here is a character type that I created recently, and uh, I've got about 14 different hairstyles available for this character, and five different hair colors, as well as uh, three different eyebrow shapes, and about six head shapes. I've also got uh, about nine noses, four different eye types, including no eyeballs, so it's just a pupil, and we've got four different skin tones, five shirt colors, as well as uh, we've got sort of a, a thin and a fat version of the character. Uh, we've got shoe controls just to have a different couple of options for shoe colors. And different colors of pants, as well as some facial hair and face accessories, just like sunglasses, earrings. Here is our little man, and uh, if you have a look over in the layers, um, we're going to open his nose. And what I have is three sublayers, which each have their own nose in it, which is just a curve. And uh, so each of them is a different look. We've got a sort of ski hill, sharp pointed nose. And uh, I've got a, a, a curved shaped nose, as well as something more of like an aquiline nose. And all it is is a, a layer with a curve on it, uh, but I've made sure to name everything really well. Um, naming is really important in using Layer Picker. So now over back in uh, Character Animator, let's have a look in the drop down here. And so here we have our three layers, but we're going to look in this... Uh, behaviors area and if you look at the middle column here we can add a little plus to the nose and we're gonna choose layer picker now what layer picker allows us to do is pick one of those three layers so you see over here we have uh, the layer picker behavior has been added to the project and let's create a new scene for our character so here's our guy we're just gonna scale him down a wee little bit because he's kinda big Okay. Now, with him selected, you'll see that there's this layer picker with nose in brackets, and that's the layer picker behavior that's been assigned to the nose layer. Uh, we're going to go over to the controls menu, and you see right now it's blank. We could generate controls if we want, but what we're going to do is go back to the layer picker, and under the percentage offset, we're going to click on the three little buttons and say add to controls. What that's going to do is give us a little percentage offset slider. Uh, we can slide that now and that would change his nose, but what we're going to do first is going to go to the layout and change this from minus 100 to 0. We're going to now rename the percentage offset to no shape. And uh, if I go back to the perform tab, 
and slide the slider, we can see that his nose is changing. So suddenly we have uh, a guy who's able to have three different noses. Let's go back to Illustrator and uh, have a look at some other things. I want to illustrate how you can add even more changes. Uh, so here we have three different haircuts. If we head back to Character Animator and look in the Rigging tab, um, let's go over to the Hair and we're also going to add the Behavior Layer Picker. And head into the Scene file to actually set up our controls. So again, see right now the Afro is like the, the first thing because it's the top layer. But uh, we're going to go into Layer Picker with hair in brackets and to the three dots and say Add Controls. And again, we're going to hit the Layout tab. Take the minus 100 to 0 and rename it to Hair Style, Hair Shape. Now when I slide the slider, we see different looks, and I could change his look. Now suddenly we have six different looks. Obviously he looks quite similar still, but these are already starting to give us a lot of options. What I like to do next is add even more. So we're going to go with our three different head shapes that we have here, which are fairly similar, but uh, slightly different. So now we have three different items that we've added some options to. Obviously, you can add as many hairs as you'd like. Uh, if you wanted to have 20 different hairstyles, you could. But what I'd like to do is give different hair colors. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to duplicate the fro layer three times. The second one, we're going to select it and change the color to a black as you can see here it's now a black fro and the third one we're gonna select that and switch the color over to uh, yellow So it's really important that for every layer picker item, you really properly name things just because um, just because it can get out of hand. If, if you do this in a big way, you can have, on some characters I've created, I have 20-something uh, options on one slider. So you really want to be able to keep things organized and uh, naming things ends up taking quite a bit of time but it is really important in the end so I'm gonna fast forward through this next part so what I'm just doing is duplicating my hairstyles several times and making sure to have them named properly so I'm gonna save that file in Illustrator now under our hair we're going to add a layer picker behavior to each of the hair styles. So for the fro, for blocky, and for pompadour we're going to add a layer picker. And now that we've added those three, we're going to head back into the scene. And if you see here, we have Blocky, Layer Picker, Fro, and Pompadour as their own separate items. So we're going to just go through this and do a percentage offset control for each one. And right away, I always just name my sliders immediately, just so you don't end up having five sliders that say percentage offset and getting confused as to which one is which. All 
Okay, so we have now three sliders, and if you see I slide the hair blocky color doesn't do anything, but because the pompadour hairstyle is up, what I'm going to do is now, really what we want to do is combine those three sliders into one. So I'm going to go over to the layout and select all three holding the control key, and we're going to group them. So now we have a slider that says grouped control, and I'm going to rename that to hair color. And let's go back to the perform tab, and if we slide his hair, so we see black hair now. We can now slide the hair color over, and here's the blonde hair. And the brown hair, and the black hair. So here's another example of a little more stylized character. It's a little more cartoony, and uh, I've got a lot of different head shapes, nose shapes, eye shapes. We've got different pupil colors, uh, different pants, and shirts. And we've actually got different body types. So it starts with sort of a female body type, uh, a broad body type, and sort of an average eggplant shaped body uh, and if you see if I hold over the slider here we've got 26 parameters here for the skin color so that's hands faces ears all the different head shapes so it can get rather complicated when you're doing this uh, but character animator is quite good at animating with all this it's really uh, wh where you'll lose a little bit of time is it might take uh, a minute or so to load up the actual puppet file before you bring it in as you're bringing it into the project. So there you go. As you can see, it's really powerful. Uh, I'm able to have one puppet file with a lot of different character types and it makes it uh, really easy to just build out a world. If you want to have extras walking around in the background, you can do that. And uh, that's one of the great powers of uh, Adobe Character Animator. I'm hopefully going to be doing a lot more of these on how I use Adobe Character Animator and uh, the things I do to get my productions moving along fast.